What's up guys, welcome to My Living Legacy. In this episode, we're gonna take you inside some of the live Q and A's that I've been doing over the last few weeks. We're gonna pull out a couple uh, important questions and answers that we feel that you're gonna be able to get the most value from. I've been absolutely enjoying this process of all this live streaming and answering questions. Uh, to me, at the end of the day, my job and why I'm doing this stuff on social media is to provide you with real value that you can actually implement in your life and go level up. So this is the absolute best way to do it. So whether you're jumping on these live streams uh, with a question to ask, or you're just jumping on there to hear other people's questions and the answers that follow, I think that this is the best way that you can take and implement and see your life get better, become the best version of yourself from the Q&A format. So we're going to take a couple of those key questions here. Hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time on My Living Legacy. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners, this success to me, giving the best of me, My Living Legacy. Jonathan Parker says, how does, how does being present and your living legacy work together, both personal and professional, man, that's a great question, but I think there's this, um, there's this, there's a, there's an interesting dynamic. So you hear, have you ever heard anybody say like, Hey man, nothing personal. It's just business. Hey man, nothing personal. It's just business. Everything is personal. Let me repeat that. Every single thing is personal. There is no difference between personal and professional. And so, you know, how does it work together? I think it, it just, it is one and of the same. Um, and, and I want and strive and I would say am the same person personally as I am professionally. We got a question here uh, from Hudson it says, what does discipline and being intentional mean to you <laughs> the uh, the answer there would be everything um, everything everything uh, is done with intentionality uh, 100% and uh, and discipline is really <laughs> discipline is the key to success like I love when people are you know people ask me yeah how do you stay so motivated I seem so motivated all the time I'm like I'm not I am not um, it's not about motivation. It's about discipline. It's about that do it anyway mentality that we talked about in the Q and A two days ago. Um, that when you don't feel like it, when uh, when you don't want to do it, doing it anyway, like doing the things that you know you're supposed to do because those are the things that are going to get you moving in the right direction towards your goals. Those are. It's all about discipline. I've become infatuated with discipline and habits. Um, I've talked about this a bunch lately, but that book Atomic Habits by James Clear uh, has really made a huge impact uh, on me. It's something that I've been talking a whole lot uh, about lately. So definitely go check out that book, Atomic Habits. Um, but being intentional, the one thing I will mention with that, uh, something new here is, is it's so important to be intentional with your time. And you know, a lot of what we uh, talk about is you know, with life goals and taking people through this process of having three goals in each of the four areas of life, um, your relationships, your body, your mind, your business. Um, the key to that, that process is being intentional with the time that you're spending in those areas. So, you know, I, I'm the kind of person that I, I want to be all in, in all areas. And what that means is that when I'm home, I want to be intentional with that time when I'm home. I want to be intentional about the, with the time with my wife. I want to be intentional with the time with my daughter. When I'm at work, I want to be intentional in the in the, in the tasks that I have to get done uh, for the day. Uh, when I'm at the gym, I want to be intentional with the time uh, that I have at the gym, uh, and, and which creates an environment of efficiency. The trucker girl here said, "How do you get someone motivated? Uh, I know a guy uh, with great potential, uh, but maybe less motivation." Uh, so here's the thing, you can't, you're not gonna be able to motivate anybody else. Um, that's something that they're gonna have to do uh, on their own. Uh, and really all you can do, that's a, it becomes a very difficult conversation, right? Uh, because basically when you're trying to motivate someone else, it's kind of like saying like, hey, um, you're lazy and you need to do better. Um, but you can ask questions and ask great questions. Uh, one of our favorite books here is QBQ. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, you checking that out. It's question behind the question. 
Uh, but it, when you ask the right questions, it won't put them on the defensive. It'll it'll open up a, a proper conversation on how you could possibly get their motiva motivation level up. Uh, but when you come at it from the standpoint of of hey why or why aren't you doing this or or what you know what did you you know what what's your problem here? That's immediately going to take somebody on the on the defensive, and uh, that's not going to get you anywhere. So by asking the right questions you can really figure out what they want. Like ultimately, what do they want in life? And then you can help them figure out how to get that. Cole says, is being a realist with a leaning toward negative views so that you're not often disappointed like an optimist who gets their hopes up a bad thing? Let me read that again because that was kind of a complex sentence that I didn't really <laughs> enunciate the right way. Um, is being a realist with a lean with leaning towards negative views so that you're not often disappointed like an optimist who gets their hopes up a bad thing. Um, I think it's personal. I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing, but I think it just depends on how you are able to handle it. I'm an optimist um, through and through. Uh, I just always believe in every situation that I'll be able to you know, figure it out. Um, but you know, there, I, whether you're a realist, optimist, pessimist, like I think a lot of that has to do with what you've been telling yourself for so long, right? Like if you've been telling yourself that you're a realist for so long, then that's just become you. It'd be interesting to see if tomorrow you woke up and just started telling yourself that you're an optimist. I think it'd be very interesting to see over the course of a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, how your life would begin to change and how you saw the world. Uh, by what you were telling yourself, um, so that would be that would be my viewpoint on that. Um, I don't think that you know hedging um, reality based on your mentality is ever going to be a um, a good way um, to level up uh, personally. Um, but again, that that comes from an optimist point of view. So yeah, that's that's tough. Melissa said, getting ready to start my own business. What's your advice? <laughs> my advice to, to you is, is very simple, but it's very difficult. Um, again, it's simple, but it's difficult. And it's to get clarity, to get extremely clear on what you actually want in your business, to get extremely clear in what are the most efficient revenue generating activities. What I mean by revenue generating activities, the activities that actually lead to making money and making sure that you're focusing as much time as humanly possible on those revenue generating activities. Uh, there are so many people that take this step into entrepreneurialism. They start a business and they are constantly working on their business, but not necessarily working in their business or for their business, meaning they're doing administrative stuff and set up stuff. And I got to get this LLC and this paperwork, and these attorneys and my CPA and this and this and that. Meanwhile, nothing's getting sold. No services are being provided and no revenues coming in, which ultimately ultimately results in the, the business failing. And so you got to get super, super clear on what you want in that business. Is that business being started uh, to ultimately have some type of exit um, strategy? Uh, or is that business being started in something that you are truly passionate about, something that is based around your lifestyle and is something that you feel like you, you could do for 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, years potentially? Um, what does your daily life look like within that business? Get extremely clear on what you want because until you figure out exactly what you want from the business that you're starting, you won't truly have any any ability to create a plan and, and a roadmap and how to get there. Um, and that how to get there needs to be more than just a destination of, of a monetary goal. It needs to be in the lifestyle that it provides for you. All right. This is a good question. Um, Darren Salmon said, how long did you have to grind building your agency to transition into a leadership training role? Uh, it was like three and a half years, like three, three and a half years. No, a leadership training. Well, probably two years, not even to two. where I think there were, you quickly hit a leadership role. But I'm saying I think they meant to where I was no longer um, selling day to day. Three and a half, three and a half years. Uh, but that being said, we still we still sell. Like the, coming up here in about a month, we're going to yeah. be 
hard back at it um, just because it keeps us um, closer to the field. And uh, it's, you know, I don't ever want to ask somebody to do something that I'm not doing myself. Uh, and it makes you that much better at the coaching, training, you know, leading um, process uh, when you're when you're in it. Uh, so that's super, super, super important. That being said, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, dog years is like, what, seven years for every one human year. The amount, the amount of time that I spent selling in those three and a half years is probably a 15 year career for most people for sure um, because I sold over 8,000 life insurance policies in, in those three and a half years. So um, in real sales world years, it's probably like 15. We talk about culture over skill, but how do you overcome the fear of losing the skills of an employee who doesn't fit the culture? That is a great question. Um, and for those of you that are in any type of leadership position, um, you've probably had this thought go through your head. Um, this may sound a, a little bit heartless, but any skill can be replaced. Any skill of any employee can be replaced. If they're not a fit in the culture, then they are a cancer to the organization. If they're a cancer, then they have to be cut. Like it's, it, there, there's, and, and Joseph, who's, who's sitting here in the office, he, he's, I think he learned from his mentor and he taught me that, you know, that question of when should you get rid of, a, of an employee that is a cancer to the organization? And the answer is the very first time you think they are. Um, because cancer spreads and once it starts to spread, it'll infiltrate, infiltrate an organization and you will start to see it pop up in other areas. Um, so it doesn't matter if that person is the number one salesperson in your organization, just walks on water, does not ever fail, and is bringing in 70% of the revenue to your well, maybe that's 70%, that's maybe a long shot, but bring, <laughs> bring in a ton of revenue to your organization. If they do not fit the culture, then long term, it is a bad, bad ROI. Somebody said, I uh, hope said I'm an optimist, but I've been let down a lot. How should I process all of that without a bad taste? I get so irritated with poor me attitudes. Um, you know, Gary V talks about this a lot. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this a lot, um, about not having the ability to be let down, about giving and giving and giving without any expectation of, of anything in return so that you can't get let down. And, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. Easier said than done. Easier said than, than lived out, certainly. Um, but she said, I'm an optimist, but I've been let down a lot. How should I process all that without a bad taste? I think when, man, when you get let down, you just have to look at it. And this is an old Jim Rohn uh, saying uh, that I used to listen to so much. And, and when he said, when he would get let down, he would just say, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And then move on. You just have to understand that, pe that people are going to let you down. That imperfect humans, which we all are, um, they're gonna let you down. It's gonna happen. And not to expect anything from people so that you cannot get let down. And some people will look at that and they'll say like, oh, that's not a great way to go through life, like not having any like expectations that people are gonna actually do stuff. It's not that, it's just not, needing it's not having the expectation that you need that that positive reinforcement or you need that person to follow through or I'm doing this and I need that person to reciprocate so that you don't allow them to let you down like if I don't expect anything from you you can never ever ever let me down because I never expect anything in the first place and that doesn't say anything negative to you it just says something positive to me and how I want to live my life and and this is not something that I've created on my own. Like this is something that I've learned directly from Gary Vee. And one of the reasons why I'm so incredibly grateful for the blueprint that he's put out that so many of us follow. What's up guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my living legacy. When you see that little live button pop up on Instagram, when you see the live stream pop up on Facebook, jump in there, join the conversation. If you have a question, ask it. If you don't have a particular question, get in there and see what other people are talking about and see if it may pertain to any area of your life that you can level up in. I really enjoy this process of Q&A and I want to be able to benefit you guys as much as possible, providing real 
tangible value. And I think this Q&A format is going to be the best way to do it. So I'm going to keep on doing it. Until next time, this is my living legacy.